Good morning to everybody. I um, been look, looking forward to talking to you all. Uh, this lesson's been in my mind, in my heart for several months. I've been kind of thinking it through. Did all kinds of different preparations, and I got all these words in this paper, and just hope it comes out just how I want it to come out. If you're visiting with us, we're glad you're here. Perry, our pulpit minister, is out for the for today. Uh, he went to back to Alabama to do some visiting with, uh, I think, a former church that tried to helping him through his struggle of uh, losing Linda. So he's kind of renewed some friendships. But I uh, actually volunteer to uh, fill in for him the next time he was going to be gone. What, you, what do you need to know about me? I am a follower of Christ. I am a disciple of Christ. I am a shepherd, and I'm also a PA. I'll describe to you what that means a little later. And I also follow the Holy Spirit. This lesson's about several different things. It's about walking with God. It's about living in the light. It's about your spiritual health and well-being. One of my goals as a shepherd has always been to raise the spiritual level of the whole congregation as a whole, and the spirit to raise the spiritual level of people individually as I get to teach them and as I get to try to work with them, pray with them. There's not going to be any slides today. This is the only slide that I'm going to show. Um, that keeps me from trying to fiddle with something and also talk at the same time. So I'm not going to, the slides that I have, there's a piece of paper, there's a, in the rack of pew in front of you, there's a white piece of paper. If you want to write down scriptures that I'm going to go through, I'm not going to show them up on the screen so I can read them to you. Uh, I'll pause a minute and let you find the scripture and we can read it together. If there's something that you want to write down, uh, feel free to make a note. So, if you don't get anything else out of this lesson, what I want you to remember is this. Being a follower of Jesus is different than being a believer in Jesus. Let me repeat that. Being a follower of Jesus is different than being a believer in Jesus. I've been reading two books this summer. One's called Walking with God by John Eldridge, and one's called Walking with uh, God Through Pain and Suffering, which is by Timothy Keller. Quoting John Eldridge from his book, Walking with God, he quotes, we are invited to become followers of Jesus, not just believers, followers. There is a difference. A follower assumes that someone else is doing the leading. As he calls us his own sheep by name and he leads them out. He goes ahead of them and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. John 10 verses 3 and 4. I'll actually start in verse 1. John 10, 1 through 5. I'm telling you the truth. If a man does not get into the sheep pen through the gate, but climbs in by some other way, he is either a robber or he is a bandit. The one who comes through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The man who guards the gate opens the gate for him, and the sheep knows the shepherd's voice. The shepherd calls each one of his sheep by name, and he leads them out. After he brought them all his sheep out, and he walks ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. And they would never follow a stranger. They would run away from him. They would not recognize a stranger's voice. Question for you and for me is, is Jesus leading you? Is he out ahead of you? And do you know his voice? How do you know Jesus' voice? You have to know the word. You have to be in the word. How do you know the voice? You listen to the voice of Jesus in the Gospels as he, as he lived on the earth and he, he taught people, as he gave stories. You have to know Jesus' voice. The other book I'm reading is called Walking with God Through Pain and Suffering. It's by Timothy Keller. One of the lines in his book says this, quote, It is one thing to believe in God, but it's another thing to trust God. So who do you trust? Do you trust God? So the combination of being a follower, 
letting Christ lead you. Christ knows your name. I just wonder if it's your given name or if it's a name he's given you when you became a Christian. I'm always curious about that. Let's suppose this. People should know that we're Christians. Every day, every people that we meet, we meet strangers sometimes, and we're, we're just standing in line with different people, but most of the time we're around people that we know or have acquaintance with, either at work or our neighbors or our family, but they should know that we're a Christian. If somebody asks you a question, is it hard or is it easy to live a Christian life? What would your answer be? Is it hard or is it easy to live a Christian life? You have to be careful how you answer that question. If you say it's hard, then some could say, well, where's your faith? If you say, well, it's easy, nothing to it. Then someone could say, are you really a follower or are you just a believer? Have you really been tested? Have you really been through what it takes to be, be a Christian? Let's ask some Bible characters. Let's ask Jesus. Jesus, is it, is it, uh, is it hard or is it easy living the Christian life, being the example? Now, if you, I put the cross up there. So in order to talk to Jesus, you have to look up because he's on the cross. So let's ask Jesus and he's on the cross. Is it hard or is it easy, Jesus? We all know the story. Pain is obvious. But in Matthew 27, verse 46, Jesus he yells out loud. He's been pretty quiet. He, he hasn't lifted a finger. He hasn't really, he's just gone through the process of being killed. But in, in Matthew 27, verse 46, he realizes that he is separated from God and he cries out in a loud voice. We don't always realize that we're separated from God until there's a crisis in our life. Remember that statement. I'm going to come back to that in just a little bit. Let's ask Paul. Paul, is it easy or is it hard to live a Christian life, Paul? 2 Corinthians 12 says Paul had a thorn in his flesh. Asked God to get rid of it three times. Answer is no, not going to get rid of it. Living a Christian life is going to be hard, Paul. 2 Corinthians 11, verse 25. Paul was, gives an account of what his life's been like. And he says, three, day, three times I've been beaten with rods. I've been stoned once. Three times I've been shipwrecked. Spent a day in the open sea. Ask Paul. Paul, is it hard or is it easy to live a Christian life? Let's ask Stephen. Acts 7, 40, 54, Acts 8 through Acts 8, 2. Stephen was stoned to death for standing up for Jesus and not giving in. Stephen, is it hard or is it easy to follow Jesus? Let's ask Peter. Peter, is it easy or is it hard for you to live a Christian life? Jailed, beaten several times. Verse four of verse, verse uh, chapter four of First Peter, verse twelve through nineteen, gives an account of. Peter's life and his sufferings. And history says that Peter was crucified like Jesus, only a little different. He was crucified upside down. So you can go through all kinds of different Bible characters and you can ask the question, is it hard or is it easy to live a Christian life? So a question is, how did these Bible characters do it? How did they live through what they lived through and remained faithful? How did they do that? There's two things. There's several things that you could list. There's several things that you could probably come up with, and we could probably brainstorm and come up with a lot. But for my lesson today, I've got two things. One is that they were all spiritually healthy people, and they all lived in the light. 
They were all spiritually healthy, and they lived in the light. I'm going to read 1 John, 1 John chapter 1, verses 5 through 10. This is kind of the basis of my whole lesson. And then other, the other lesson, verses I'm going to give are kind of feed off of this. But this, this, is where, this is where the foundation of it is. 1 John chapter 1, verses 5 through 10. This is the message that we have heard from him, and we are telling you that God is light, and there's no darkness in him at all. Therefore, if we are friends with God, yet continue to live in darkness, then we are liars. We are not following the truth. God is light. We should live in the light. If we live in the light and we have fellowship or a relationship with sharing of each other, then the blood of Christ, God's Son, continues to cleanse us from all of our sin. If we say we have no sin, then we are only fooling ourselves. The truth is not in us. However, if we admit our sins, God will forgive us. We can trust God, and he, and he does what is right. He will cleanse us from every evil thing, and if we say we have not sinned, then we call on God a liar. God is not in us. As you kind of look at this message, staying close to God is always important. There's no darkness in God at all. For us to work as a Christian, live as a Christian, to make it as a Christian, we have to stay close to God. And we have to fellowship with one another. And we have to fellowship and we have to live in the light. And when we do that, then God cleanses us from all of our sin. So how healthy are you? That's my question today, is how healthy are you? How spiritually healthy are you? Let's go through a typical doctor's office visit. Um, you go to the doctor. I know we all love going to the doctor. Not really. Sometimes we go when uh, it's, we're really hurting and we, have finally, we try to fix things ourselves and we try to work through things. And then finally, we just make the appointment and say, okay, I've got to see the doctor. I've got to figure out what's going on. I can't fix this. So what's a, what's a typical doctor's visit? What does it look like? What's the first three things that they do at the doctor's office? They weigh you. They take your temperature. And they take your blood pressure. Now, sometimes I, I know doctors do what they've got to do because that's how they were trained and that's what, what needs to happen, but I'm thinking, well, why, why do they want to weigh me? Uh, that's kind of a secret. I don't really want other people to know how much I weigh. So now I'm weighing in front of a total stranger, and they're writing it on a piece of paper, and it will be there forever. How much do you weigh? The next thing that they do is they take your temperature. Again, they don't tell you what your temperature is. They just write it down. And I'm always curious, and I'm always thinking, I'm going to go through this process. I want to know what's going on. So I was like, what's my temperature? Uh, well, it's so-and-so. And then they, get, they take your blood pressure. And then uh, you go sit in a room for a little while. And it's funny how you, you always think of all kinds of things in a doctor's office and you're sitting in the room trying to figure out what's, what's going to happen next, what, what's, what's going to be going on. And then the doctor comes in and he says, what are you here for? I said, well, I just, we just, I just gave you all this information. Um, I was hoping you'd tell me what I'm, what I'm here for. And he said, no, I guess I want to hear it from your own words. You know, what, what's going on? And then they go through. In Mark chapter 5, verses 25 through 34, there was an account of a woman who had been bleeding for 12 years. And many doctors tried to help her, but it just got worse and worse. But Jesus was the only one that could stop the bleeding. Jesus is the great physician. Here's the account in Mark chapter 5, verses 25 through 27. There was a woman who had a sore and had been bleeding for 12 years. She suffered much. Many doctors had tried to help her, and she spent all of her money. Imagine that. She spent all of her money. She said she had, she's only getting worse. But she heard about Jesus, and she knew that Jesus was the great physician. Jesus is the great physician. 
He is the one that can heal us, and he is the one that can help us. And so she touched the cloak of his robe, and she got well, and she was healed. Let's go through, let's go through an exercise or a, a checkup with Jesus, the great physician. Let's say, let's say we're going to do a spiritual health checkup on you, and Jesus is going to be the doctor, and you're going to be the patient. This, this examination may hurt a little as we kind of go through this. And Jesus would also put you on the scales, and he would weigh you. But unlike uh, my regular doctor, or our doctor, Jesus knows all the answers. He knows, he, knows, he knows how much you weigh before you weigh. He knows what your temperature is before you, he takes your temperature. He knows what your blood pressure is. So Jesus would say, as he come into the office and he would see you, he would say, well, looks like you've been putting on some weight. And you would say, well, you know, living in a Christian life is kind of hard sometimes. And he would say, what kind of sins are you carrying around with you? Do you have any in your pocket? Now, what I'm going to read is basically comes from Galatians chapter 5, one, verse 19. These are some sins that you may have in your pocket that may indicate how much you weigh as, as Jesus examines you. Here are some possibilities. You could have some sexual sins. You could have some hate. Do you have any jealousy in your pocket? Do you have any anger in your pocket? Do you have selfishness? Do you have any envy? Unanswered, unanswered questions. Unanswered questions is your, that are keeping you from having a greater faith. Are the things that bother you as a Christian? These are all spelled out in Galatians chapter 5, verse 19. Jesus would also take your temperature. Now, if they take your temperature, what does that indicate? It indicates you have an infection. Jesus would know if you have an infection or not. Here are some possibilities that Jesus would come up with. You have a tongue infection. Words that are coming out of your mouth are not kind. You have a mouth infection. I think you need to have some medicine for that. You have the infection of worldliness. You have, the inf you have an ear infection. You don't, you don't listen very well. In fact, you speak more than you listen. Um, you you've been infected with hypocrisy. You've been infected with being rich. Uh, these all come from the book of James. The book of James is full of advice on how to stay spiritually healthy. So if you're looking for a book in the Bible to help you to stay spiritually healthy, James is the book to read. Jesus would also take your blood pressure, and he would know what your blood pressure is. And what he's looking for there is the amount of the Holy Spirit that you have in your body. When Jesus left the earth after he was resurrected, he sent the Holy Spirit to help us. I'm going to read from Galatians chapter 5, verses 24 through 26, and Romans chapter 8, verses 5 through 11. Galatians chapter 5. Those who belong to Christ have been nailed with their own human nature to the crosses, along with its feelings and its selfish desires. But since we get life from the Spirit, we should follow the Spirit. That's why I said originally that I am a follower of the Spirit. You must not be conceited or make trouble for each other, neither should you be jealous of one another. Romans chapter 8. People who follow human nation, nature are thinking about evil things which the human nature wants. But people who follow the Spirit are thinking about the things of the Spirit. And the, the way human spirit thinks is death, but the way the Spirit thinks is life and for peace. The way human nature thinks is hatred for God. It doesn't want to be put itself under the God's law. It can't. People controlled by the human nature cannot please God. However, if you are not being controlled by human nature, you're not being controlled by human nature. You are being controlled by spirit. If, if God lives in you, if anybody does not have Christ's spirit, he does not belong to Christ. So, Jesus would know how much of the spirit that you have within you. A lot of times, um, uh, I've kind of gone through this lesson, my wife tells me I, I don't smile enough. So I've wrote my notes in here, so I'm going to smile. Okay. 
Okay, that's one. So here it is. What's, what's the answer? What is the answer for being spiritually healthy? It's all in 1 John chapter 1, verses 5 through 10. Living in the light. Living in the light is reading the scripture on a daily basis. You've got to read the word of God every day. Being spiritually healthy is also praying to God on a daily basis. It also is connecting with the Spirit on a daily basis. It is not forsaking the assembly, which is worship, fellowship events, Bible classes. The first three things that I've explained and talked about that have to do with spiritual health has to do with reading your Bible, praying to God, and also connecting with the Holy Spirit on a daily basis. These are all things that we're, where we connect with God. And the last item has to do with connecting through people. So to stay spiritually healthy, you have to be in the Word every day. You have to pray every day. You have to connect with the Spirit every day. And when opportunity gives itself to you, we need to assemble and be together as a family as many times as possible. So which is first? Which would be first for you? Which would be first, reading the Bible or praying to God? James chapter 1, verse 19 said, Every person should be more willing to listen than to speak. When you open your Bible and you read, we all believe that the Bible is the Word of God. The Bible is the Word of God. So when we read the Word of God, God is talking to us. He's talking to me. And so from that, you ask the question, God, what are you trying to tell me today? What are you trying to tell me? And then after you let God talk to you, the polite thing to do and the Christian thing to do is for you then to pray to God. So you should read the, God, you should read the word first. Let God talk to you first. And then you should pray. And then you should either comment on what, and, and ask God questions about what you've read and then you pray to God and ask him for what you need. So let God talk to you first, and then you talk to God. The book of James is all about, say, it's all about listening and speaking. I'm going to smile again. I have an application here real quick that I wanted to show you and ask you about. Um, this is, some people know what this is. If you come to our miniature golf event on the, the, the winter, this is a golf hole. This is going to represent God. This golf ball is going to represent you or me. We all start at the same place. We all start at the same place. God's right there on the golf ball. And it's sitting right there by the, by the hole. In golf, you call that a gimme. If you play golf with a foursome and you make a really, really good shot and you get, you don't put the ball really in the hole, but you get really, really close, that's a gimme. So we all start at the same place right here. But what happens is to us whenever we start living the Christian life is things get in the way. Things separate us from God and they keep us from living in the light. So I'm going to start with like a 10-year-old to a 12-year-old of things that... Now, these things could keep you from living in the light. And as I say these, I'm going to start stepping off some steps. So you're 10 years old. You become a Christian. What could possibly keep you from living in the light? You get your first cell phone. You spend so much time on the cell phone, you forget about living in the light. You get, your, you get your first car. You're out and about, and that's all you want to do is drive. You graduate from high school. First year of college, you're introduced to things that you can't say no to. You graduate from college. Now you get your first job, your first real responsibility, working long hours, trying to impress the boss. 
You meet the woman of your dreams or the man of your dreams, and you get married. Therefore, you make another promise. The first promise you made was back there when you started the whole journey to say, I will stand up with you, God. I will never forsake you. I will never leave you. You make the same promise to a lady or to a man. You have one child. You have two children. You have three children. Your child starts sports. You start sports with your child. How far am I away from God? How, how far away could I be from God if you don't live in the light? So you step it off and you figure, mm, what is that, 20 feet? Now, people on this side probably don't see. There's a hazard right here. And you think about, well, how am I going to get, how am I going to get back? How close do you think I can get? I might have to get some help. I think I'll call Joe Wallace. <laughs> He's a good golfer. He, in fact, he would do this for me. Or he'd do this for anybody. But I'm thinking, no. It's 11.16. Uh, I guess Joe would probably be in church. I better not bother him. So I'm not going to bother Joe. Let me continue. You lose your first job. You go through a divorce. You get a serious medical issue. You lose somebody really close to you. You just get mad at God. Now where am I? Now how am I going to get there? Now it's going to take more than a putter for me to get up there. It'd be a pitching wedge. Who can I call? I'll call Mel Schaefer. You know why? He had a hole in one one time. He's so good at golf, he doesn't even need a putter. He could do the pitching wedge and drive from here, and he could put it right in that hole. So the golfing rules say you got to hit the ball where it lies. But Christians don't have to do that. You know what they do? They pick themselves up, and they go right back to the beginning. It's called repentance, forgiveness, and grace. The invitation is this. How spiritually healthy are you? Be a follower of Christ. Be a follower of the Holy Spirit. Read your Bible. Pray to God. Connect with the Holy Spirit. Don't forsake the assembly. Attend Bible classes. And that's what helps you keep living in the light. I said something about a PA. A PA is a physician's assistant. If Jesus is the great physician and I am a Christian, I am a physician's assistant. I am a PA. You can be a PA. You can help others find Christ. That's also, be called, that's also being called a disciple. So the invitation is this. If, you're, if, you're, if you feel like that, that you need spiritual help, we'll come, we'll come down front and we'll pray for you. If you want to just say a prayer to God from where, you, from where you're sitting when we're singing, you can do that also. Um, if things are a little bit more critical with you in your, in your spiritual walk and you need some other assistance, I would be glad to help you, or any of the shepherds would. One of my emphasis this year is to be able to talk to people that have become Christians within the last one to two years. 
to give them spiritual health checkups. Um, as babies, when you're born, you're taken to the doctor probably seven to ten times before you're a year old. What they do is they just check up on things. How, how's this working? How's that working? Things don't look good or things do look good. Look, what can we do to fix this? So we do a poor job sometimes in the church of trying to take a pair of new Christians. We let them on their own. We let babies raise themselves. So I, my commitment this year is to try to work on spiritual health and to work on making sure that people that have become Christians and that they're really, really close to God, that they stay close to God. So if you are subject to the invitation call, please come as we sing to each other.